I'm Allison with MuchMusic.com, and I'm here with Mr. Frank Music. Hi, Allison. Part of the Cherry Tree Tour. How's yes. it going? It's been great. Quebec last night and Toronto today. Wonderful. Beautiful city here. Wonderful. Big turnout last night. Incredible. It was completely sold out. Yeah. Big sports arena. You know, it was deafening. It was absolutely amazing. Well, the tour alone, you guys still have favorite night, I would think. Yeah, it's it's been it's been absolutely great, you know, just just being able to be with with the record label artists and stuff yeah. that I've been working with the past it's, couple of years. It's a great label. I'm so excited to talk to you about music, and I'm really excited to talk to you about how you started off because you right. you got a lot of attention with your MySpace page. Right, that yeah. was a big thing. But a big push came from radio in the UK with you, I believe. Regional radio, yeah. yes. It Which wasn't main you, radio. You don't hear that very much anymore. That actually radio is a big thing. It's usually now you've got like the Kate Nashes and Lily Allen's right. where it's all on the internet. Well, Were you surprised by with, that? With the UK, I mean, it's a, it's a completely different market. It's a tiny, tiny country compared mm -hmm. to Canada or America. And so if you get any real sort of mainstream energy going, then yeah, I think people, you get, you get traction. But it's a fleeting fan base. Um, if you want to get the hardcore fan bases, live shows, live shows, live shows. So that's what we yeah. did. And we managed to do a great um, tour that year. And um, we've been touring ever since with, with big bands. It's been great. Great. And Do It In The AM is out now. Yes. It's a great album. Thank you. And there's some great collaborations on it, but your first album didn't have any yeah. song-wise, which I thought was interesting because you work with so many artists. Did you almost do that on purpose to establish yourself as an artist? Absolutely. With, with Complete Me, my first album, it was I was trying to say, hello, this is what I'm doing and this is, I've entered the building. Um, the, the new record is me moving to America much more relaxed and, and just having fun, you know, and I think that threw a few people, but you know what, you, you can't just be doing the same thing every album. Yeah. I, I refuse to do that. And of course you worked with Cherry Cherry Boom Boom mm -hmm. on this record, who everyone knows first from working with Gaga. Yes. I would think as a nurse and as a producer, you would have to learn a lot from him. He's been an incredible force to reckon with. Um, I came here thinking I knew everything and um, he, he set the record straight very quickly, no pun intended. Um, but the, the, the main thing about, about Martin that's so great is um, his never-ending ambition, you know, and his energy to, to want everyone to do well. He sees artists in the long term, not in the short term. And that, that's a great business mind to have, and it's, mm -hmm. it's also great for the artist. And a huge thing that you did, you worked with Erasure, who I love. I saw them right. years ago. Love them. And they pretty much came out around the time, I think you and I were around the same age when you were born. So that's yes. a huge band to work with. Were you intimidated going into the studio with them? Well, um, you know, a, a band that have managed to have a 25 year long career and it was, you know, that's, that's incredible in itself. Um, I grew up listening to Yazoo, um, Depeche Mode and Erasure, you know, my mum's record collection and Vince Clark was involved in all of those projects. And it would have been scary if they hadn't been such lovely gentlemen. Yeah. They were very accommodating and um, they let me do whatever I want, which was kind of scary in itself. But it was great and the, the, the craziest thing has been going on tour with them and seeing them play the songs that I've produced and it's seeing the crowd reactions and just being in the crowd while you're seeing people either listen to it or you know, if they've see, heard a leak on the internet, they already know the words and stuff. It's mm -hmm. been incredible. Is it a different experience seeing people enjoy music that you're performing compared to music you're producing? Oh, absolutely. When when you, when you can be the when you can be the sneaky little person in the crowd just looking around, mm -hmm. then you feel much more in control. When you're on stage, you're there performing your art live, mm -hmm. where anything could go wrong, and um, you know. You, you, you're putting it all out there, whereas I can step back. When it's on record, it's it's done, and, yeah. and then it's up to uh, Andy Bell to sing sing his heart out. Yeah, and you work with a lot of new artists. So uh, yes. was it different going in with a band that's been around like, like over two decades? Absolutely, um, they're veterans, absolute veterans. Um, their songwriting and arrangement techniques are so unique and, and so them, and that only comes from years of practice of in live and in just studio work. I mean, they're incredible mu musicians. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want to discredit the, the, the younger artists that I've worked with. It's just a whole different way of doing things. Yeah, and someone who's actually been around a little bit, but yeah. is still very young, Joe Jonas, yes. who you worked with. I talked to Joe this summer before his album came right. out, and I said, how hard was it finding producers who understood you weren't doing a Jonas Brothers record? And he right. said it was difficult, but he actually mentioned you and some other producers right. and, and how much that helped. 
as a producer, is it difficult to know when to really help someone find their sound and when to step back and make sure it is their own sound? Um, <clears throat> with, with, with Joe, um, as, as an isolated example, um, you know, I met him on a personal level. Um, it, for me, he was just a great guy to hang out with. And um, we, we worked together. And, um, you know, I was going through a period where I wanted everything to be crazy. And um, I think the, the, the label that he was with was like a little bit kind of, uh, but I think it's good to go super left mm -hmm. and then someone to say, can we bring it back to the middle? I think if you stay in the middle, then, you know, nothing ever develops, nothing evolves. So I will always be the person who just will kick it one way and then, and then someone in a suit will try and bring it back to normal. Yeah, there's that balance. Yes. Um, a song that I love that came out, uh, I guess about a year ago, was American Dreams, Sky right. Prayer. All right. that track. Amazing. Is it true that Britney passed on that? I have no idea. That, that's the, that was the rumor I just wanted to Yeah, no, no. I, I mean, the, even if Britney heard it, it would be yeah. amazing. But um, uh, I, I produced the one track and that, that was it. So yeah. um, uh, I don't even really know what Sky's up to. But I kind of like to do that. I, mm -hmm. like, I like people to experience, you know, one track of me because mm -hmm. then they've, they've gone somewhere wildly different. And it either scares them or they want more. Yeah. And, um, you know, with, with, with someone like Sky, you know, we wrote a great song. But, you know, this, things just didn't meet in the middle. So yeah. I was busy, she was busy. It happens. Well, it's a great track. And, of course, it's called American Dream. Uh, yes. You're from the UK. And I was thinking, you know, Jesse J co-wrote Party in the USA with Miley Cyrus. Right. There is an idea in Canada that even if you're a huge Canadian artist, you haven't really made it till you've made it in the US. Right. Is that the same, do you think, in the UK? Where it's, you can be big in the UK, but it's really... I think some people have would answer that differently. Yeah. Um, um, most UK acts are very specific to the UK, I think. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things that don't cross over, mainly because they don't want to cross over. They're quite happy in the little territory of the United Kingdom. It's a very scary and ominous task to try and break America, just from its scale. Um, Canada, of course, has a very similar scale, very big, big place. Mm. Um, I, I don't feel it's really about, it's, it's, it's actually, it's only about what the artist wants, you know, if they think that America is where they need to be successful yeah. and that's when they've made it, then that's their choice. But a lot yeah. of people feel they've made it just within the shores of the UK and, and Canada. I, yeah. And you're, you're living in LA now, but I'm sure you've noticed there's, music goes in waves and right now we're in a wave where there's kind of a British invasion, you know, we've got Adele and right. Tiny Temple and Natalia Kills who mm -hmm. you're touring with right now and you. Um, as a UK born artist, do you notice that there's a shift right now towards UK being like Adele's the number one record? In um, Ad Ad Adele um, got, had a really lucky strike. Um, you know, from what I heard, the beginnings of that, I mean, she was massive in the UK. Um, and, you know, she had an unstoppable voice and, until recently. And, um, you know, she, she's just, you just want to love her. I mean, you know, she's just. Her songs are great and everything like that. England has always been great, so Britain has always been great at producing iconic acts instead of just the garb sort right. of thing. Because there is a culture in the UK which says, no, you can't. And so the stuff that manages to get past that is really good. Mm -hmm. From David Bowie to Sting to ELO, you know, I mean, I'm going way back here, but they were iconic acts. I was listening to ELO this weekend. My favorite, <laughs> Jeff Lynne, legend. Um, but the, you know, that, that's the thing, I think, that the reason why the British keep on producing stuff is because there is this constant no culture. Right. And that's being massively um, amplified by the X Factor culture, where yeah. everyone is a Simon Cowell now, apparently. So people dismiss very easily yeah. um, music. So whereas in, the, in America, it's, it's much more of a yes culture. Mm -hmm. So I think the standard is, is much harder to get better or original when everyone's like, yeah, that's great the way it is. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm massively generalizing here, but that's my small take on it. We did make Rebecca, Rebecca Black like, number one this year, so... Right. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> so you're one of the few producers and artists who's kind of 50-50 in both. Yes. So people kind of lean towards more. Do you think both of them make you stronger at the other? I would think being a producer makes you a stronger artist and vice versa. Um, it, it comes with its um, problems. Um, yeah. You, you Does know, it make you a perfectionist almost? Mm, no, I, I'm never a perfectionist. I'm too lazy to be a perfectionist. <laughs> um, uh, the, the, the main thing is you, you see both sides of the industry. You know, the, the, the artist is always made to feel that they need producers, mm -hmm. you know, whereas I've tried to empower myself. And I think that's going to be the future. Um, with, with record sales slumping and, you know, every, the, the whole industry 
scared out of their mind. The only way people are going to succeed is by consolidating and, and expecting more from themselves. And mm -hmm. um, we're in an industry where if you have a laptop, you can do anything. Right. You can be a graphic designer, you can be a musician. There's nothing stopping anyone mm -hmm. apart from yourself. So the more acts that are likely to get signed are people who are going to cost less money. I right. mean, it's a simple fact of it. Right. And your sound now, it's, it's very pop, but of course you've got a very big electronic background. Yes. With any job, whether you work in a hospital, in school, you're in a bit of a bubble, like, same with musicians, and there's been a huge increase in electronic music in the mainstream. Yep. Have you seen that? Or are you? Oh, it's, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's the rise of the computer. It's the rise of the internet. Do you um, think that's what it is? Absolutely. I yeah. mean, when, you know, when a rock band says, you know, or electronics or whatever, everything's got electronics in it now. Everything. Um, you know, com ev every song is made on a computer these mm -hmm. days. Um, unless you're like the, the white stripes and you're recording everything reel to reel, but the, 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 that culture, you know, that's just development. You know, that's what happens. And electronic music um, has changed massively. Um, I think it's going to go through what rock and roll went through in the in the eighties, where it gets too saturated mm -hmm. and it starts to just eat itself. The same thing that happened to hip hop. It kind of lost its identity in the late nineties, early two yeah. thousands. So, um, without too much of a pop history there. Um, but yeah, I think that, that, that's what electronic music is going through right now, and I think it's going to mm -hmm. be over pretty quickly. Where do I see myself in that situation? Well, I, I'm opening myself up to live instruments now as well, so oh, to survive. Yeah. <laughs> You've worked with, of course, a lot with Colette Carr yes. on uh, her upcoming album. Um, the great thing about Cherry Tree is that no, none of you really sound like anyone else, yes. uh, including Colette. How is it working with her in studio? Um, Colette's uh, a, a real tenacious character. It's yeah. great. You know, she, she knows what she wants, and those are the favorite kind of people to work with. You mm -hmm. know, you, you want people who already know what it is that they are, because yeah. then you can say, mm, that could work or it couldn't. But if you're with someone who's like, I don't know who I am, well, that's not my job to figure out who you are, mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be anyone's job apart from your own, because you're not an artist then, you're just a, you're just a guy or a girl sitting in my music studio. Yeah. So um, that's that's really good, that's been great, and um, and I, I'm really proud of the work that we've done together, mm -hmm. it's been awesome. We're, we've been playing No ID. Oh, thank you. Boy to Ben the Station. Of course you worked with her, with Natalia, with yeah. Far East Movement. Are you guys working on tour, or are you just enjoying? I, I'm, just, I'm just sitting back watching TV mm -hmm. um, in the tour bus. I, I only like to work in my music studio because then I can play my music exceptionally, exceptionally loud yeah. to annoy the person who owns a shop below me. <laughs> I can't do that in the tour bus. No. You've got so much going on right now with the tour and working with everyone. What's next for you? Where are we going to see you next? I have no idea. Um, I, I, That's I, exciting, isn't it? Absolutely. Right? After this tour, I'm just going to go snowboarding for a while. Good. Drink in some Canada? eggnog. Um, uh, hopefully. Yeah. Whistler would be nice. Uh, but I'd be definitely going to Minnesota and Utah. Wonderful. Snowboarding, how about that? Wonderful. Well, Cherry Tree Records is on tour right now. Check them out in your city.